Hey y'all, today we're gonna show you how we make our easy crock pot round steak in our slow cooker. And we're gonna take y'all around the Grand Canyon National Park here in Northern Arizona. Oh, we're having a whole lot of fun. Welcome back to another edition of Cooking Chris's Dishes with the Good Old Boy, where we're cooking up dishes straight from RecipesThatCrock.com, which is my beautiful wife's cooking blog. And today we're going to make an easy crock pot round steak in our ninja. Yeah, just making sure it was a ninja. It is. It's not hot yet, so I can do this. <laughs> I didn't realize I could do this until I did that. I'm just glad it's not hot yet. Anywho, we are right now near the Grand Canyon National Park here in Northern Arizona. We are in Williams, Arizona in the Grand Canyon Railway RV Park. Yes. And you know how we know that? Because the trains go by a lot and they don't just do it during the day. They do it at night. And also, if you hear this whooshy whooshy sound going on, it's the wind. Oh my gosh, if I were a kite, I'd be gone. The 30 mile an hour wind. If I were standing outside, I'd be gone. So, just to let you know, for safety's sake and safety reasons, this little cooking thing is taped two days after we went, actually, to the Grand Canyon National Park. And the reason I say that is because the wind is so bad right now, but you're going to see some clips where I'm standing on the ledge with a mile drop below me, and you're thinking, that idiot's out there doing that when it's 29 mile an hour winds. No, I did it on a non-windy day, so before those comments come down below, people are still going to comment and say, that idiot was standing on a ledge. I was going to say, I, I don't really see the difference. But. You'll, you'll see that here in just a little bit. But anywho, it's extremely windy. We've had some issues with our awning that's over our slide out and you know i made those foam pieces that go in there and the wind was so strong it just blew them out so i'm i'm hoping that i fix that problem but it makes no difference the wind is blowing so hard you're going to see me doing this a lot feels, i have not been drinking nor has my camera lady it feels like we're on a cruise ship it really does it's windy i'm seasick and so <laughs> naturally we're going to make food <laughs> So anyway, here we go with the ingredients for this easy crock pot round steak, and that is, well, round steak. We've got about two and a half pounds cut into serving size portions. So we've got about six pieces down in here. You figure, little eight ounce pieces, whatever. I don't know, maybe my math's off. I don't know. They just look like There's two and a half pounds, but it looks sizes. like a, a steak. You know, yeah. look, you want to see? She's holding the camera right now because everything's so wobbly. So why not just make it more wobbly and... That's what steak looks like. They also got a pieces. view of our dirty dishes in the sink. Hey, cake. real life. Very good. Real life, we have dirty dishes. I'll do them later. You <laughs> also need a can of cream of mushroom soup. I did the dishes. Last I know, week. and it's like <laughs> pulling teeth. I know. Anyway, a can cream of mushroom soup. You want one fourth cup of freshly squeezed H two O. That's water, by the way, for those who don't have a chemistry degree. And then also you want to have uh, onion soup mix. Now, Chris makes her own, which is pretty cool because it smells real good. But you want to have a packet of onion soup mix, or in this case, uh, you're, you a, say we're going to have the... A the, tablespoon and a half. A tablespoon and a half of this, which you'll... You're, are you going to have us... I'll to, give them give a them link them? to... Because it's another food blogger. Yes, another food blogger. Who is it? Uh, low carb zen. So, because we need a low carb version of onion soup. No, mix. <laughs> we need a low carb version yes. of soup because the soup mix can be really high carb. So we need a low carb version. Should I do? I'll do that last because it's pretty strange. Anyway, tablespoon and a half of that. So first thing I want to do is find my spatula. Um, Found one. No, I didn't. Um, That's a knife. It should be under there. Is it here? Oh. No. We're so well prepared. Hmm. You did the dishes? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, that's why. <laughs> it doesn't usually go in there. <laughs> I had Addie dry and put up. Oh, so it's not my fault. okay. I'm still oh, perfect. now more comes out. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, can of soup spread over the top of the steak. Why 
didn't you know where you would put it? Because <laughs> I forgot to ask my kid. <laughs> but cream of mushroom soup is one of my favorite things to put in just about any dish. Mm -hmm. It's just good. And if you don't like the canned soup and you want to go to the trouble, we have a homemade version on the yes, site if you want to make homemade. Do. Me, I don't mind using the canned stuff. Let me get that spread out over the top of the beef. Oh, yeah. And then, I'll take my quarter cup of water in there. I'll make sure that everything doesn't get dried out. And then, my tablespoon and a half of the onion soup mix right over the top of the meat. Move my spatula out of the way. And then my half. Might be a big half, but that's okay. It's the better half. Kind of like you, babe. Ha ha ha. But, but if you're not eating like low that. carb or you don't want to make your own, you just get like a Lipton soup mix. Yep. Onion soup mix. I think it's onion dip soup. Whatever. It's just a little packet. You dump in there. Put a lid on it. And then how long are we cooking this for? Low for six to eight hours. Low for six to eight hours, which should give you plenty of time to go see the Grand Canyon National Park in three, two, one. Oh dear. <laughs> so we just pulled into the Grand Canyon. We're just doing a scouting trip tonight. And I think it's going to be kind of fun to mess with the ranger. Michael. Hi, welcome. First time here. I, I like a large whopper. <laughs> Large. Okay, fried with that, <laughs> supersized. We're using her ID because mine's fake. Okay, okay, oh great. You're, uh, and that's that's you on the left. Yeah, her without the beard. Yeah. Okay. There you, oh, you need, need maps today? Yes, yes. please. Okay. Okay, we'll have that. Uh, we, you want to make milkshake as well, right? <laughs> so this shows the. Uh, oh, we just ran out of milkshakes. Oh, well. So hikes, and this is also uh, shuttle buses as well. I try not. I try to stay away from the milkshakes. They oh, bring all the boys God. to the yard. So. Oh well, how are we going, guys? See ya. <laughs> <laughs> well, at ridiculous. least he had a sense of humor. <laughs> oh, <Two>. man. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> so we're going to go check out the Grand Canyon, just kind of do a swoop around the South Rim, yeah, I guess. <laughs> That's where we are. And I don't know, maybe we'll see some wildlife in the dark since we, we got out did. here so late. Yeah. Well, yeah, we did. We saw, we saw a, a, a herd of elk. Is it a herd? I would think so. I don't know. You know it could be a gaggle. It could be a murder. That's crows, but who knows? Oh dear. Here we go. My gosh. Oh my gosh. Hey y'all. It looks like a sandwich. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's pretty grand, huh? <laughs> you know, it was pretty canyon that we were gonna see this. That is Oh my gosh. We're so coming back here tomorrow. I mean, it's, it's kind of dark right now. I can't wait to see this in the daylight. Let's get it started in here. We are, well, we're not in the Grand Canyon, but we're near the Grand Canyon. We're at the gateway of the Grand Canyon. Yes, that was, that bumpiness back there was a railroad track because she put us near a railroad. It's okay, it's, there's something dangling behind. Oh, no, it was a telephone pole. Never mind. <laughs> Let's hope Anywho. it's not dangling. <laughs> 
Oh. Anyway, we are in Williams, Arizona, mm -hmm. which is about 50 miles away from the south rim of the Grand Canyon. Yes. And it's a lot like, um, it's definitely a tourist town. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of shops, lots of restaurants. Um, everything pretty much says Route 66 on it, because a Route 66 on it, because this is Route 66 to take us to um, the Grand Canyon. Or takes us to the road that takes us to the road <laughs> to go to Grand King. Anywho, uh, we're getting our route, or we're getting our kicks on Route 66 today. Yes. For about five minutes, and then we're gonna head on down to the Grand Canyon, and we're gonna explore. Yes, we're gonna see things. We we took a sneak peek last night, mm -hmm. and Mikey saw his first elk. It was kind of dark, so the the shot on the camera was a little dark, but you could tell what they were. They were huge. I'd never seen an elk before. They're like deer on steroids. No, no they're a different they're, species. <laughs> well, they're related to deer. <laughs> um, but then, and you guys got your first peek at the Grand Canyon. Mm -hmm. Yep. And now we're going to show you on the rest of it. And it looks a little something like this. What you call lot sharking we found a spot yeah we maybe should have got an earlier start of today you know how good we are at that <laughs> we had lots of things kind of suddenly happen today so and we had bad wi-fi last night so the video was late sorry three we, weeks ago <laughs> so we had a time this morning and today's the prettiest of all the days we're going to be here are you in straight? It feels like you're in crooked. You might want to look at your tail end out there. I'm going to go look at my tail end. <laughs> Here Gotta we go. go. <laughs> the south rim of the Grand Canyon right behind us is Mather Point Mather Point Mather's Mather Mather oh, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter but anyway uh, it's a lookout point over the south rim and it's really crowded yes. and so I didn't want to like be sticking my camera out in front of people's faces down there with everybody so um, we might go down there here in a little bit but we're just exploring today gonna take a small trip uh, walking around and we'll probably come back at least two or three more times before we're done So y'all are gonna see plenty of the Grand Canyon But we just got through seeing a video at the visitor center talking about how the canyon was formed um, From hundreds of millions of years ago We've half a billion years ago up to six million years ago when the Colorado River started carving this out at 
the amount of a piece of paper, the thickness of a piece of paper a year. And it's still doing that. And today. it's still doing that now. So it ain't quit yet. But it's it's the colors down here are brilliant. Again, we could do I could do this all day and just show you video after video and picture after picture of it, but it won't do any justice to y'all coming down here. So if you've been to the Grand Canyon, you know what I'm talking about. If you hadn't and you wanted to go, don't let us stop you. Go. But it's gorgeous. And now we're going to go keep walking it. Here we go. Hopefully, we'll stay on the ledge. We're living on the ledge. there around Mather Mather Point however you pronounce it there's guardrails everywhere everybody's stopping to take pictures of the canyon I decided to go where there's no guardrails Chris won't even look at me right now she's about to have a heart attack because I don't know about a mile drop <laughs> just kidding That is a mild drop down there. I, I, I think I'm gonna sit down now. You just don't get this view in Indiana. So there was a British lady back there visiting our great country and the Grand Canyon. And you could tell that she was deathly terrified of heights because she'd walk about 10 feet, then she would have to sit down and hide her eyes. So I decided to walk out right on the very edge of the ledge of the canyon. I felt safe and she saw me do it. We all know that your version of safety is skewed, Mr. Rattlesnake Man. She started crying and said, that man's going to die. And I got in trouble. Let's see that badge. Next time you can read the pledge to me. <laughs> Just getting ready to get in the parking lot, get in the truck and head back and get dinner. But check it out. More elk. Look at that. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. You're not bashful at all, are you? See? Is that not the coolest thing? I just feel like I can reach out and pet it, watch it. He's about 10 foot away. That's, I think that's as close as I need to get. My wife's in the truck going, Michael, Michael, get back in the truck. Let's get the elk out of here. Well, that was grand. Uh, see what we do. We walked about 4.2 miles today. Something, something like that. Happened. From the visitor center to the hotel. I'm trying to remember the name of it. El the, the hotel where we went and then we're like hey are there buses or do we have to walk back we, we, we had to walk days. back but there's an old hotel there as well as what was oh, it oh el tovar hotel yeah el tovar that was it yes and then there was also like a, a shop there where addy got her eighth ranger badge yes. 
which is awesome. Good job, Miss Ann. Visitor Center. She's back here jamming the stuff on her headphones, so she doesn't even know we're talking about her. <laughs> but yeah, uh, the lady was impressed to hear that she had eight of them, um, and it was it was just neat to go back and look at the history of the conservation of the Grand Canyon, and it was um, Teddy Roosevelt who made it a national monument back in 1908. I know the history nerd. But Teddy Roosevelt, who you know formed the Rough Riders, and uh, he was the Secretary of the Navy, and he was like a he was a, a, a manly man, and, and he loved hunting and exploring and fighting in wars and running a country. The whole time you're saying this, I'm thinking of Robin Williams and Nyan. <laughs> and Museum, yeah. But uh, so Teddy Roosevelt, he makes it a national monument in 1908. And then Woodrow Wilson signs an act that further protects the, the Grand Canyon and turns it from a national monument into a national park. And that helped to clean things up because back in the early, late 1800s, early 1900s, uh, everybody was coming in and trying to make a dollar off of the spectacle of the Grand Canyon. I had read something where somebody was like, there was a like hiking trail that people were like, really like charging like a guy just set up a booth and he's charging people to hike up a yeah and i think they shut all that down too yeah yeah um. there was <laughs> the, the sanitation wasn't good there were people living out of box cars living in tents and you know doing what they could to make a buck off the people who were coming from the east to come out and visit such a huge awesome spectacle that is the grand canyon it's uh what almost 300 miles like 277 miles from one dam to the other um, of the Colorado River that runs through the Grand Canyon and um, the average is 10 miles wide from the South Rim to the North Rim and 10 miles really isn't that far away when you look at it like that it just it doesn't look that far but it's 10 miles wide and it's about 5,000 feet deep from the top where we were down to the Colorado River that is still acting like a saw this is what saws do. They go, wee, 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 wee. And, and still cutting through at the amount of the thickness of a piece of paper every year, cutting through the Grand Canyon. So um, they've been doing that for six million pieces of paper. My goodness. I know. I could go on and on and on, he just could. like the Colorado River is through the Grand Canyon. We, we hiked four miles with him today. Yes. <laughs> I got in trouble a couple times because I got a little too close to the ledge. But she's <laughs> in. Did you notice her demeanor change? She doesn't like it when I go and do something a little foolish, a little silly. And I know in the comments down below, I'm going to hear about that people have fallen off the ledges. And I, I got to give you all something here. Where the ledges were that I was standing on, there was another ledge down below that you didn't see. And then another ledge below that. Anywhere where it was a straight drop off, I did look and peek. But I wouldn't do anything silly because I know me, and if I can burn myself with a crock pot, I can slip off the edge of a rock. I don't mind falling five feet, but it's that other 4,995 feet I did not want to fall. So, but it was it was still neat and it was still fun. But there was there was one part where I stood out on this ledge and I was completely safe. But then if you look at where you're at, I mean you could tell your way up, but then you kind of look out and it, it just you can see a mile down. And it made, it made you dizzy. And so I I stopped. I do not enjoy that at all. No. Whatsoever. <laughs> my my wife has a fear of heights. Now that lady that lady that was there, nice lady, she was freaking out. I mean she couldn't even look at the canyon. She was probably at one point when I was watching her, she was like thirty feet away from the edge. So there's no way it was nothing could happen unless somebody like pushed her off of the car and there's no cars up here and she was freaking out so then I start stepping along the ledge and doing stuff and I, I thought she was gonna have a heart attack so I quit but it was fun the elk were cool yeah she told me the whole way up here Chris is like you're gonna see elk you're gonna see elk because I kept seeing signs from Lake Havasu all the way here talking about elk for the next 50 miles no elk and then you'd see another say elk next 30 miles no elk so we get up here and i see signs elk she's like you're gonna see elk you're gonna see lots of elk i'm like no we're not 
we pull into the park and they're everywhere. I wish I would have got a shot as we were leaving, but there were elk mingling with the white-tailed deer and eating, having dinner together like friends do. <laughs> and it was, it, was, it was just neat. It, yeah. I'm and blown drink, away by everything. And we drank fresh spring water. Yes, fresh spring water pumped up from the springs of the Grand Canyon. So that was cool. I think at about every one of the visitor center, they had a place where mm -hmm. you could refill your reusable water bottles. Yeah, the best taste of water. Mm -hmm. so good. It was really good. Um, and of course, you, they, there's a geology museum there if you're if you're a rock hound or you you want to be or you're just really interested in how something as big as the Grand Canyon formed. It definitely wasn't overnight. You just skipped right over that, didn't you? No, yeah, I, I didn't feel like going in and reading about how the Grand Canyon was formed over 1.3 billion years of tectonic shifts and erosion and uh, coming and goings of different oceans that came through and landed different sediments down. And then as the different sediments came, it compressed everything down. And then, of course, you had the volcanic action and the shifting and the pushing, the uplift of everything that had been compressed that pushed up the Grand Canyon into this, the height that it was. And then the Colorado River that carved down in along with the rest of the erosion that created that huge crevasse known as the Grand Canyon. Yeah, I didn't want to read anything about that. So, with all that hiking, did that make you hungry? I'm starving. You ready to head back to the cow? Yes. Here we go. And we're now back from the Grand Canyon. I hope you all had a good time. I know we did. Uh, my apologies to the British lady who did not like the fact that I was standing on the ledge and she was freaking out about it. What about your wife? My apologies to the hillbilly lady who was also a, freaked out by the fact that her husband was on the ledge. But sometimes we're living on the ledge. And I kept myself from falling. Anyway, <laughs> we're back and now it is time to check out this round steak. It has been cooking for somewhere between eight and nine hours. I checked it about... Seven. seven and it was done but it wasn't necessarily like tender it was kind of uh, a round steak can go either way it doesn't have a lot of fat in it no so. that's your problem right there so let me and when anytime beef isn't tender enough you just cook it longer but if you look down in there now it's tender mm -hmm. it's tender and it's bubbling and those dishes still aren't done just you saying. just ratted me out to the crock posse. That's well, true. The dishes have stacked up. I will eventually do them later. I have that on tape. Put the lid. Notice I didn't give a definite color. <laughs> Let me do a little cutting here. See just how this puppy is. Actually, it's not a puppy. It's a cow. Well, that's good. Yeah. Octavius is reassured now. <laughs> You're safe for now. And the only spices in this was the cream and mushroom soup and the onion soup mix that Chris made. Did it have any salt in that soup mix? I don't think it had, well, it had bouillon, which mm. has salt in it. But to me, it's salted enough. It's not like fall apart tender like maybe a chuck. a chuck roast would be, but it's like a roast beef. To me, it reminds me of my mom's roast beef. It's got that same texture. It's really good. It's well, beefy. and the round steak was a lot cheaper mm -hmm. than the chuck roast was. So. so if you wanted to do something where it wouldn't be, if you wanted something a little softer, you might go for a chuck roast. You're going to spend a little bit more, but it's going to have that fat in there that's going to make it a little more tender. That, like it is, is really good. That would go really good over a huge plate of mashed taters. Oh, I think it would make a good sandwich. Or it would make a good sandwich. Mm -hmm. Or it would make a good sandwich with a big old plate of mashed taters. <laughs> uh, sorry, this whole low carb thing, every once in a while I, I miss my mashed taters, so I might just have to fudge some point in time. But that is really good. That was really simple to make. And I give it one of these. I will continue to eat this. But as I'm continuing to eat this, We just want to say thank y'all for tagging along with us here to the Grand Canyon and on all of our adventures around this great country of ours. And if you would, if you like this, give us a like down below. If you have not become a member of the Croc Posse, what are you waiting on? Do it now! 
do it now! Just click that little subscribe button down below if you want to see what's going on every time we put something up and you want to know immediately, click the ding -a right next to it, that little bitty bell. It'll tell you any time that we put something up. We try to put something up two to three times a week so we'll hang out with you. So, also, one last thing, other than me taking one more bite because I'm starving. Laugh often, <laughs> eat good food, and speak life. Love y'all. Bye. Am I out of the shop? <laughs> no. And we're going to take y'all around the Grand Han the Gadan <laughs> in Northern Arizona. We're in Northern, we're just going to say Northern Arizona. Hey. Oh Lord. <laughs> if you want to see the latest, click on the left right here. If you feel like subscribing, click on the right, my dear. And if you think we're funny, enough to send us money, click the Patreon link below.